Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another wardrobe update. I am feeling a little bit under the weather as I'm feeling this so I'm just letting you know in case you'll be able to pick up on it uh, through my energy or my voice. But I still really wanted to film this today and as always we are going to talk about what's new in my wardrobe as well as like other thoughts and feelings. We're going to talk about some of the things that I'm wishing for, what I've been uh, wearing, etc, etc. And I think this update is probably going to include a lot of reflections because I have a lot of thoughts and feelings going on right now uh, about my wardrobe and also I haven't bought that much, uh, I mean relatively, but I haven't bought that much since the last wardrobe update and I think it's because with the last wardrobe update there I'd just been two weeks in Copenhagen so I was doing some shopping there and I just got like really lucky last time around and I found some really really good pieces, like some pieces that I've just really been enjoying uh, wearing for the past month. You know, the denim skirts that I ended up with and the gray headdress. I also bought the uh, wool sweater from Arcade and yeah, I have another couple of things that I've just been like really focusing on wearing. And so I've been less interested in adding new things to my wardrobe just completely naturally because I've had more than enough to wear. I mean, that's the thing. You always have something to wear, but is it something you want to wear? And right now I, I have a lot of things that I really enjoy wearing. So yeah, just been a little bit less focused on adding new things to my wardrobe but still I have bought some things uh, and um, we are gonna talk about them. So the first thing that I have added to my wardrobe as of late is a pair of boots from Zara. Dark denim boots which means that I would say that now my uh, dark denim Canadian tuxedo is complete. Actually I saw these boots for the first time in November in Zara. I did think they were really really cool but at the time they were $100 or Swiss francs it's almost the same currency and they're not that comfortable it's not something i'm gonna be walking around in a lot and i still hadn't hadn't found the other knee-high boots uh, the black leather ones that was actually what i was you know looking to add to my wardrobe so at the time just didn't make sense like i couldn't justify buying these boots and they are more of like a fantasy self item to a certain extent except I do think I will be wearing them, just not a lot. But I walked into Sarah at the beginning of the year, so like a few weeks back, and they were on 60%, so I paid $39 for them. And I just, yeah, at that point, it was like a no-brainer. It's like, I actually kind of just want to own them. You know how there are things within your wardrobe that is like, you don't wear it that much. Like, I might only wear these like a couple of times a year, but something you just like to own anyway. I kind of feel like it's the same thing. Okay, maybe a little bit less so, but uh, as with my leopard sweater from Ghani, that's also something that like, I mean, I don't wear it that much. My wardrobe could maybe do without it, but whenever I wear it, I feel really good and I definitely love owning it. I really appreciate and love it. And I'm assuming that it's gonna be something similar with these denim boots. Like, I think they're just gonna be fun to own and wear every once in a while. Super, super uncomfortable very very beautiful then i bought a cropped jacket also on sale from cuss as you have seen that on on instagram took it with me home i tried it on with quite a few different outfits and i actually ended up taking it back decided i could find something that suits my style better and actually bought a short trench coat from arcade which has just arrived uh, i'll be showing some pictures as you see it but to be honest i'm not 100 percent sure i want to keep that either and if i'm 100 sure uh, not 100 percent sure i probably shouldn't you know i should practice what i preach but it is a really cool look which is also why I bought it I'm just not sure that this is this is exactly the right one then I also just bought this bandeau top from cuss I tried it on as part of like making like a reel for my new Instagram just like checking out all of the new cool things that they have in cuss at the moment and I really really like this one I've sort of developed a thing for this like bandeau uh, look and I do have to be careful not to overdo it um, like super quickly I just want to get like a real good proof of concept in before I buy things like exclusively like this or I have to wear bandeau all the time but I am really enjoying the look and I also like about this that it's something that's like longer because the other like I have the bandeau dress and then I also have the bandeau denim top but the denim top I don't know it basically just because of the end of this top it is a different look to it and if you're looking to get it definitely size up just once it is quite tight but uh, very very beautiful that's actually sort of like what I've added I haven't bought anything else but that has also made me open to explore getting some of the things off of my wish list because I do have my now updated wish list up uh, on my website at all times and 
you know how if you have a wish list yourself you know that a lot of these items they're just they sort of just stay there and you keep postponing them because as you're like shopping and going about your day and styles are changing like there will always be the next item you'll always find something that you would uh, like to own and those things ends up making the wish list or like coming before some of the things that are further down so i had a look at my list and i was like okay you know are there any of these things that uh, i've actually been like wanting and been wishing for for a while that I could go ahead and like fulfill now because as someone who has gotten I would say pretty good at buying things that I end up using and then every once in a while you know I will buy something that I end up not using and then usually I will take it back because I realize that before you know I'm wearing it but actually the things that tend to like make me the happiest within my wardrobe are the things that I don't know it's it's you know, the things that you really wish for, they're probably the ones that are gonna last more or less forever within your wardrobe. But for whatever reason, sometimes the purchase can feel less exciting because it's not like fulfilling this like impulsive need, need that you have here and now. But all that said, out of the way, I bought a locket from Monica Vinader. It's not here yet, but uh, the wish is basically to have something engraved with three flowers a swiss flower a danish flower and a an, an english flower like all of the national flowers and um, i saw that it shipped so it's gonna arrive in time for the next wardrobe updates of course i just wanted to get into that a little bit of course i'm gonna show you the locket once it arrives and i'm also gonna show something else that i have engraved on it that is very special to me as well but yeah i think it's gonna be exciting uh, once it turns up because obviously it's something very personal and it's something that i've been wishing for for a long time and uh, maybe you know when you guys see it if you had something similar in mind, you'll be able to like assess the quality of what I got. So that's exciting to actually starting to like tick off some of the things on my actual wish list that has been on there for a while. And then there are also other things from the wish list that uh, I really would like to get right now. Like for example, the black boots that I have right now, like the, of course, the Vagabonds, the Maya ones, and I have a couple of other pairs. Like they're all just so worn out. Like I'm in desperate need of nice black booties, but I am so picky with black boots. In that sense, the search continue, but like with the locket, it wasn't really like a search. Uh, of course, actually that's not quite true because I did have to figure out the design and stuff like that. But anyway, the locket is on its way. And since I haven't added that much else, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about like my search for the perfect stockings. If you're following me on uh, the Naya Sierra Instagram, then uh, you will have noticed that I've been buying a lot of stockings. I think I've literally uh, gone through like eight pairs or something like this in the past month or a little bit more than that, which I naturally do wear tights a lot. So that's also how I was able to go through that many pairs, both because they keep ripping, but also I do wear dresses and skirts almost every single day. But um, uh, a lot of things that I bought is like more local things. I also used to have a pair of wool, I say used to have a pair of wool foot, like I broke them or they broke the first time I wore them. I'm not sure really exactly what, what happened, but I was very disappointed. And I've gone through like a lot of like local things, you know, I can buy things from Chalcedonia, I can buy things from like my local, uh, you know, things that it doesn't even make a difference to say, but also like H&M, blah, blah, blah. And so far of the things that I've tried, the things that I have done the best is uh, Swedish stockings. It's probably the best that I've had so far. I also bought a pair from Sheertex because Sheertex is actually doing tights or selling tights at H&M now. So it's completely randomly that I saw because, you know, living here in Switzerland, a lot of the time, Ordering something from international brands, it is sort of like a hassle either with the shipping or like the taxes and yeah, so just when I saw that Sheertex was available at H&M, I bought a pair and they are, I don't know if they are unbreakable, but they haven't broken yet like and they are doing really well. Like the toes are intact and the legs look really good. They haven't developed, you know, all of those little like marks around on them. So they are really nice in that sense, but I do feel like the look is not as like smooth and chic as these like more like classically like 20 den like very sleek tights that is what i'm usually going through a lot so they are definitely more sturdy there's no doubt about it but they also have a slightly different look to them that i'm not the biggest fan of but in terms of like investment wise and it's not like it's such a big deal either they are really good but i will say on top of those are swedish stockings and unfortunately i actually only got to wear them like five or six times because 
I had broken a nail and I didn't really take it into account so I ripped them myself uh, when I put them on and I did have to wear them that day anyway so I just turned them around and then I had this like small hole and of course like once they have a hole in like a visible place it's no longer looks good but I will say that the hole never it didn't like enlarge and like it was just there where usually in most tights where when you create like some sort of like tear it will just run at least that's what you would call in Danish, you know, it'll make this like long strip down. But uh, that didn't happen. So my plan is to get more stockings from Swedish stockings. And then for whatever I'm doing that day, I will also alternate with using the, the sheer text because again, they are definitely more sturdy, but I do feel like you sacrifice a little bit of the look to use them. So yes, that's where I am at in that journey. And of course, I will link both below. Uh, actually, there is one more thing that I bought, which is just like a standard black turtleneck, like the ones that I already have from H&M. I have had black, black standard turtlenecks from H&M. They're usually made from viscose. For so many years now, I'm not a huge fan of them, mostly because the neck gets so loose. I feel like it's not really a turtleneck. It's just like a regular neck with like a, you know, a bit of extra fabric around the neck. It's not the best look. So I tend to like use like a, either like a hairpin or another type of pin to actually make it tighter around the neck. I think it's so inconvenient. I would really like to find the perfect black turtleneck, but I think I've come to the conclusion that there are really things within any wardrobe or like at least within my, you know, I care a great deal about curating my wardrobe, but even within my wardrobe, there really are things that are just like not worth investing in. And I think I'm really truly learning that. And I mean, if I did find like the perfect black turtleneck, I would get it. But so far, like I've been looking so hard for that. And up until this point, I'm just going to continue buying like the the less nice versions, like the ones that H&M are doing. But I just went in to buy a new one and they did switch up. Like for example, before the line that I was buying from within H&M was called Modern Classic and now it's like in H&M Basics. So the new ones that they have, they are slightly more dense and the fabric is quite sleek. It's less prone to stretching than the old one. I mean, it's still the same. It's not like it's perfect, but I just want to make sure that I'm linking that below right now because honestly, it's as good as anything else that I've found. I'll continue looking, but I'm kind of tired of putting so much uh, energy into looking for like a perfect black turtleneck. I'm just gonna give up that hunt and then randomly try on black tur turtlenecks when I come across them. And something else that this is also true for, for example, is like a lot of jewelry. You know, I do have a lot of jewelry that I truly appreciate and that I wear almost exclusively. You know, I have the antique ring that I've had for years now. The other ring, the Ansoa one that I've also had for years. I have the, H um, the Hermes bracelet that I also wear a lot. I have some other things, but I've also tried, for example, to invest into nice gold hoop earrings because it is something I wear every single day, so you would think it would make sense to find like a really nice version of it. Like you would think that would be worth the investment. But I've just learned, like I've tried and um, no, like uh, it's just uh, for whatever reason, I keep being drawn to like the terrible quality plastic ones that I have that needs to be rebought like every other month or three. And I'm just gonna have to have to succumb to that reality because they are my favorites. So it is what that is. So then you know, like with what I said, the locket is something that I've truly been wanting for a long time, but it has felt less urgent. Now there are new things on my wish list that, you know, those ideas that just pop into your head because you see it around. And so, for example, I found this Bordeaux leather skirt from Arcid. And if you follow me for a while, you know that Bordeaux is on my color scheme. It's always been, it's actually been my favorite color since I was like, a teenager, a very young teenager. As a teenager in Denmark, my bicycle was Bordeaux. Like so many of the things that I have owned throughout the time is Bordeaux. And now I don't have that many things in that color, like my winter scarf that I wear all the time with all of my outfits, that is Bordeaux, but I don't have that much else, but uh, I'm, I'm getting more and more attracted to that color. So now on my list is Bordeaux knee-high leather boots, as well as a Bordeaux designer bag of some sort. Something that has the same type of shape as the hobo bag or as the Pauline bag that I already have. That is just the handbag, uh, handbag shape that I prefer, so preferably like that. So if any of you think of like a Bordeaux red designer bag of that sort, like please let me know. Because I have been looking a little bit already and starting to like look around and haven't found anything yet that catches my eye. Like something ideally that I would have liked to have is like the Gucci Jackie bag, but then that comes in red and not Bordeaux red. And I have actually considered if I should get like the red Jackie bag, but 
I think at the end of the day, I'll be happier sticking to the exact red that I actually love and enjoy. But then yes, I also found this like Bordeaux red orchid skirt, which sort of like, I don't know if that's what started it, but when I saw that, I was like, wow, I really want that. But it's also, yeah, I haven't really decided yet if I should get it, but, um, but I might. So those are sort of like, funnily enough, the things that sort of they start like rising, you know, they immediately skip things that have been on my wish list for years. <laughs> These are now the things that I'm considering. But yeah, for the past, uh, you know, I don't need to be so, I'm, I don't have to be in such a hurry to start buying these things either. I mean, of course, sometimes it's like, if you don't get those things when they're available, you miss out, which is also really annoying. This is a situation I've been in many times, but you know, you always get over it, almost always. But since doing the last wardrobe updates, I have been wearing more or less the same things over and over again. Surprise, surprise, I always do that. But right now I've been in like a very comfortable spot doing that. I've been so enjoying the denim skirts that I've bought, both from Danish brands. And then also like the bando dress and then uh, wearing like a white shirt, or I'm just wearing, of course, a black turtle and I also have turtlenecks in other colors. I have a brown one, a dark gray one, but I've just gone like back to my basics, back to my roots and just enjoyed like black turtleneck, denim skirt, which, you know, that look I haven't been able to make for so long because I haven't had a denim skirt I really enjoyed. Even though it feels like it's a stable within my wardrobe, I haven't been able to make that a reality because the skirts that I've been able to buy haven't been like perfect, but now they're here. So I wear them all the time. So black turtleneck, denim skirt, knee-high boots, and then my and other story jacket. And depending on the weather, I'll also wear like my new Uniqlo down jacket. But if you haven't heard me talk about those yet, then you can in the previous wardrobe updates. But basically more or less been wearing these outfits. Of course, I'll be showing them as I'm talking. So there's really no need. Today I'm wearing a little bit of a different outfit. I'm wearing, you know, my new bando top from Cos, and then I'm also wearing jeans. So it's a pretty cool, cool look if, if you ask me, but I'm not sure how much I'll be wearing that uh, compared to the other things. And then of course, with all of this, outside of my knee-high boots, I've also been wearing my other boots, like my Vagabond boots, like this outfit that I'm, I'll be showing this outfit right now. I had made this outfit up in my head like about a year ago and I just really wanted to make it a reality. And I also talked about that in the last wardrobe updates a little bit, so I don't want to get too much into it. But basically now that outfit is here and I do indeed wear it all the time. And I also talked about the last time how I bought this basically um, very sheer long sleeve basic black top from Zara and that I have also been wearing so for example like when I'm going out for drinks instead of like the regular turtleneck I've been wearing this like you know kind of sheer top and I have linked to on my Klana shop a nicer version of this top because the Zara one it really isn't good even though I'm still wearing it and I noticed that actually a lot of you guys have uh, purchased it because you know I can see from my links how many click it uh, and they do have like a version of this top from Arcad made from this like silk mix and I've had such good feedback about it so I'm also definitely yeah I need to get that myself as well it's one of those things where like I don't know why I put it off probably because I still have something to wear that resembles it but that top won't, won't last much longer so it's good to know that that top is doing well within people's wardrobes then I just wanted to share and talk about that I have made a new Instagram. If you're following the other Instagram, the, just the standard one, the Naya Sierra one, you've probably seen it already because I've shared it on my stories quite a few times. But the Naya Sierra uh, Instagram, I do share just whatever I want. I'm not very consistent with it. It's really rare that I make a post, but I do, I do share things on my story whenever I want to. And it's really cozy to have you guys following me over there. But I have made this like other Instagram called Finds by Naya Sierra, where basically I just share the nice high quality things that I find and my inspiration for making this account is that I see similar accounts where it's like outfit inspiration which I kind of like I find that pretty cool but I find the accounts are often like all over the place and also I don't know like where the things are from I mean of course I can then find out uh, with the links in their description but a lot of them is just like mango H&M Sarah and it's tough to fall in love with pieces like that because I know most of them won't be long-lasting and even some of the things some of the ones that are long-lasting you know it's like to really want to love another polyester piece within my wardrobe you know I'd rather just be exposed to some inspiration that doesn't include that to begin with so that's what I'm hoping to do with this account and then also just like I share the things that I find that are a nicer quality even though most of it truly just are the things that I like the most from like cost right now archive right now and other stories right now and there are also like some things from H&M and stuff like that because of course they do make some okay things every once in a while but that's basically my reason for doing that and then also you know you get to see what I buy 
but I go through a lot of things to, to get there, so I never get to share the things that I, in theory, think are really nice, but I just don't you know, I don't purchase them for my own wardrobe, so that's that. Then I also just wanted to touch on really quickly, I have promised uh, you guys a declutter video. I, mean, I have already done the declutter, but I have all of the things that I've decluttered in a suitcase, so it really is as simple as taking it out and talking about it, but it just feels like such a task, but I have to do it anyway. The things that I've decluttered and are things that I'm about to like drive to the Salvation Army or that I need to get rid of here and now, I think if there's anything I've learned from past declutters, it's that you don't have to rush doing that. I like, I like to get it out of the way to prove to myself that I don't need it because I don't miss it. But after that, I, you know, s slowly start to put things up for sale. I think the times where I declutter was something where I threw so much stuff into bags and then you know, felt this incessant need to get rid of it all at once. Those days are, are, are over and thank God for that. But this time around has been interesting to do a declutter of the things that I don't enjoy and wear and also talk about like why, because some of the things, yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it more in depth in the declutter, but still some of the things are just like, you know, they weren't mistake purchases, they've just done their, their journey within my wardrobe. Like I used to think that everything that I bought would be permanent, but you know, it just isn't so. So even with a very well curated wardrobe, you know, your, your taste is still gonna change and you're gonna change your mind about some things. And something that I've already decluttered and I've already sold it is the brown curated coat. But it was sort of like interesting because now that I'm investing more or less in like nicer pieces, like things that truly have a, a, a resale value, first of all, but also that are in such great quality that like the next person that owns that after me will be able to get the exact same amount of joy out of it if not more you know that's something that i feel good about contributing to so that even though i bought the coat as new it will have like a great life after i'm done with it like you know i have the other curated coat that i really doubt i'll ever sell that like that's my og the charcoal one and i love that one so much and it honestly it still looks as new even though i'd worn it north of 200 times but with the brown one i really just came to the conclusion that like this is not the brown that i like it's not warm. I will say it's neutral. Like it definitely is fitted for a, a cool toned wardrobe, but it's not as dark and greenish of a brown that I have just now seen time and time again is the one that I really enjoy. And also when it comes to a coat like that, I do like the boyfriend coat way more. I think with my frame and stature or whatever you would call that, and also just probably my Scandi DNA, I do prefer the slight oversized look that much more. So it's a lesson learned and it's a great lesson to have because I think my cost per wear on that coat ended at like two francs or something like that, or two dollars, which in my opinion is just like, that's such a good cost per wear for like wearing like a meticulously, like a literally so perfect high-end piece that made me look so good every time that I worn it. I've just yeah, come to the come to the conclusion that it's not my style. And I did have to pay like a fee because of the type of, you know, store that we use here to sell things secondhand in Zurich. Like it's so high. I had to pay like a 50 francs fee out of the 200, uh, sorry, the 400 that I got from the co for the coat. But basically I bought the coat for 500. I sold it for 400. Then of course I had to pay the fee. But at the end of the day, I paid a hundred francs to have this coat for this long. And I mean, I didn't even wear it as much as I could have because I've actually also decided for similar reasons. I mean, in this case, it's not really about the color. It is more about the shape, but I also, I don't need the classic coat in navy that I also have. So I'm also selling that and I'm putting it up for sale for the same price and it's also like in perfect condition you know some people will get a beautiful coat from the curated with like 20% off which is a good deal for something again that looks like it hasn't been worn so I'm selling that for the same price but in my case because I've worn that double the amount of times than uh, that I had the the brown one my cost per wear will be even lower I don't know it's just so beautiful to see these things come to fruition instead of you know having so many things that you don't love and then when you don't want to wear them anymore like pieces from uh, fast fashion no one else would get any joy out of them and they're just it's just such a different journey and of course like i still feel like it's sort of like a time consuming and a little bit annoying to like have to spend time like selling the coats but it is a different experience knowing like with all of that there is like feelings and emotions involved, even though it is just materials and those feelings and emotions are so much more like pleasant than when you're doing the same thing with fast fashion, which you know doesn't really hold any value to anyone. The same thing as such a nice wool 
coat will and for a lot of the things that i am i have decluttered which is really a lot guys you know it'll be an interesting video uh for most of those pieces it's i am i wrong no i think it's gonna be more or less the same but uh, yeah it's still you know it's something that i will have to take time to do anyway i think that was more or less what i had to chat about today i hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up so that i know and i will see you in the next video. Bye guys!